Welcome to the Bella Vista Gardening Club. I am Fran Zimmerman, and with me today is Lou Jasper, my friend and a uh, master gardener and fellow member of the Bella Vista Gardening Club. She is going to be talking about how to bring butterflies to your garden and also how to adopt caterpillars and release new butterflies into the world. But first, we're going to talk about some key things to do in your own garden during August and some things that are coming up. The Benton County Fair will be held from Wednesday, August 14th to Sunday, August 18th. The Master Gardeners of Benton County are going to be having a booth there. The name of the booth is uh, Building Trails to Art and Nature, a little um, salute to Crystal Bridges, I believe. And the most important thing that they're going to be doing as far as listeners are is they'll be giving you advice and then also be signing up uh, anyone who would like to take the Master Gardener training in January. So be sure to stop by the booth if you're interested. Now let's talk about August gardening. There are several things to do in August, even though it's uh, a month we usually retreat from the garden and just make sure things are watered and go out and maybe uh, deadhead a little bit. Um, fortunately, we were blessed with several bouts of rain the last half of July, so we're in pretty good shape for watering. Nevertheless, it could be very hot, and that can, heat can take some toll on some plants. Annuals and herbs. Some of the annuals have seen better days due to the heat, uh, and they may need to be pulled. So just stroll around your garden and, and see what needs to be done. If they are doing well, deadhead them often for continued bloom. That makes a big difference. Pinch back to keep your plants from growing tall and spindly. Uh, you could try to um, harvest your basil to make some pesto. I may do that myself. Perennials. Mums should have set their buds already and they'll be blooming real soon. Deadhead the blooms on perennials and watch for any water needs. As far as your lawn, uh, lawns require uh, a deep watering of at least one inch weekly. But hold back on fertilizer during August and when you do mow, or have someone mow, uh, weigh, uh, raise the uh, height of the uh, blades on your lawnmower. Now roses, the last feeding should be done this month. Make sure that the, uh, you water well before fertilizing so you don't burn the roots. And watch for aphids and fungus and treat any problems. Trees and shrubs, check for evergreens, um, for scale and bagworms. Those planted this year, though, need ample water. Make sure that they get plenty of water. Uh, vegetables, enjoy your harvest, but continue to watch for pests. Uh, plant fall crops uh, later in the month when the weather starts to cool a little bit. Uh, good choices include Chinese cabbage, beets, collards, spinach, and turnips. Now we have the main event today with Lou Jasper here to talk about how we can enhance our gardens to um, attract butterflies and also how we can help butterflies survive by adopting and releasing. Lou, what are some ways we can get these little creatures into our garden? Well, before I tell you um, about that, I found a quote that I think really, really um, goes and tells us about a butterfly. It says, butterflies go wherever they please and they please wherever they go. They are just um, fluttering around our garden and it's just we're always amazed when we see one and we like to watch it mm -hmm. and it pleases us to have them in our garden. Now the role of the butterfly <coughs> is important in our natural world. Their number, because there are a lot of butterflies, mm -hmm. they provide food for a lot of predators and they are pollinators. And one thing that we don't even think about, Fran, is the butterflies don't bite. That's true. No, they don't sting, and they don't spread any disease. So they're one of the nice insects to have yes. in our garden, and they provide lots of beauty for That's true. our garden. Now, um, what I want to do is to uh, talk about the butterflies, and you know what I did when you and I were doing um, practicing beforehand on this and kind of getting it together? I got all of my notes out of... Well, I have a question for you. Yeah. What are, let's say, two or three things that a butterfly needs 
to uh, the, that'll attract them to my garden? Well, one thing that a butterfly is going to need is that it's going to need flowers that have lots of nectar, that stay in bloom all summer, and they have a landing pad. Okay, I might be in trouble then. On my butterfly berm, I have a lot of the native perennials, and I have some um, parsley and so forth, but I don't have blooms all year long, or all season long, because of those native perennials. Well, let's look at uh, some of the plants that I picked, or the flowers that I picked this morning. And when I talk about the butterflies having uh, nectar plants, and a landing pad and bloom all year. Some of the plants that you would have now for the perennials, butterfly milkweed is yes. one of the best. It's the orange one that you see growing in yes. the ditches and we yes. can purchase it at nurseries and plant it in our garden. Garden phlox, which this one is not in full bloom, but it got many buds in there so that, that it will be blooming. And the butterflies have a landing pad. You see how all of these plants yes. are flat? They have a place to, they put, their a place to put their feet sip. while they sip and rest. So you talked about perennials. You could black-eyed Susan. It's a native plant. Yes. They're one of the best. Uh, they are, they spread. Once uh, they kind of take over a garden, yes. but they're wonderful to put in your ditches or somewhere where you uh, can just let them go and reseed themselves. Butterflies love them. They have uh, the other perennials, but okay. your main perennials would be uh, your butterfly weed, and then you would have phlox. You would have uh, you would have black-eyed Susan, verbena. Uh, and then for your annuals, you're going to put in pentas. Uh, you you would have lantana, yes, uh, that's a, that's zinnias, marigolds, and those bloom by deadheading all summer long. So that's see that's your continually bloom. Yes. Okay, that's great. Now you mentioned um, landing pad. Mm -hmm. What exactly is now, a landing pad? Just like I showed you, it's flat on the top. Oh yes. And the butterfly comes, lands on it sucks the nectar out, and takes a little rest. But the key is, it's not just enough to have a landing pad, it also has to have nectar. Oh, lots like, of nectar. Like we were talking earlier, daisies. The, not right. a lot of nectar. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. Mm -hmm. right. They'll land and they'll get a little nectar. Most flowers have some nectar. You want to watch when you go to the store to, uh, to purchase or to the nursery, that this, this is being the native um, black-eyed Susan, has a lot of nectar in it. Some of your black-eyed Susans, they've uh, they've hybridized them, mm -hmm. and they have several tops on them or something. And, and a what flatter center. Yeah, and what they've done, the flatter center wouldn't hurt as much as maybe how many, uh, oh. how pretty it is. This oh, is pretty okay. simple. Yes. And they've they've hybridized them to look really, really fancy, and but they've taken the nectar out of them. Right. So kind of watch. Uh, when you're going to uh, purchase plants, you want to be sure that you've got lots of nectar in them, Fran. But okay. it's not just enough to have nectar, is it? No. You need to have host plants in your garden. And that's what we're going to, uh, what I think is very important and a lot of people do not think about. When, if you that's want true. butterflies, more butterflies in your garden and continue to come, then you need to do host plants. What exactly is a host plant? Host plant is just simply a plant that you grow in your garden that is going to let the butterfly lay her eggs on it okay. that she likes so that she knows her caterpillar will have something to eat as it's growing up. Okay, well what are some, um, you know, do, what the butterflies? Do they all, if you, if I just get some parsley and dill, is that enough? No. Let me, let's, there, there's many, many host plants and there's lots of different kinds of butterflies. And we can't talk about all of them today. They just don't give us enough time. No. So what we're going to do is we're going to just talk about the black swallowtail and the monarch. And we have a picture of a black swallowtail uh, that we can 
uh, zoom in on. There we go. And isn't that a beautiful butterfly? Yes. Now that's the one that we see lots of in our garden. You can tell he's a swallowtail. See his two little uh, tails down yes. there? He's called a black swallowtail. And you will have, um, you'll see a lot of black swallowtails in your garden, male and female. And they're larger, they're one of our larger butterflies. So that's why we're going to talk about the black swallowtail, how to get it to stay in your garden, and we're going to talk about the monarch. Well, what are some good then plants for those two kinds of butterflies, the nectar and the host plant? Okay, that's that's what we'll we'll zero in on. <clears throat> With your black swallowtail, you're going to use all of the plants right here. Look at that droopy flower. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you're going to host these are not your hosts, these are your nectar plants, just what we talked about. Then you're going to have uh, you're going to have your host plants. Now for the black swallowtail, any celery family plant. This is fennel. This is what I plant a lot of in my garden. Dill. I plant parsley, queen's and lace. All those are the host plants. So when the butterfly is getting the nectar out of the flowers and she's happy in our garden, then she's going to fly around and she's going to look at my fennel mm -hmm. and my parsley and she's going to think that's just what I want for my caterpillars because that's my host plant. And so what she does is she lays her egg, yes. mini eggs, yes. on the fennel. Mm -hmm. Caterpillars hatch out and they eat the fennel and you know they will eat and eat on that fennel because that's their purpose is to get bigger mm -hmm. and they will eat the leaves on the parsley but they will not kill the plant and the caterpillars are not going to eat everything in your garden well two years ago I had some lovely uh, black swallowtail caterpillars they disappeared I think because the birds got them so I think that's the purpose of your adopting program can that you tell me about that that is, but first I'm going to tell you about what for monarchs. You mm, have oh, yeah. to have a milkweed. Any type of milkweed you need to plant. And if you have for your nectar flower the butterfly milkweed, Fran, yes. then that is also the host plant Great. for the monarch. Great. They will only lay their eggs on a milkweed plant. But the monarch can will enjoy any of those nectar flowers. Any of the nectar flowers, but oh, you must have the milkweed Good. for them to lay their eggs on. <clears throat> and now I'll tell you about my adopting. Okay, good. And then how I release. Now, first of all, when you see the caterpillar, and I know that you, they cannot see it on the television, but there is a little tiny caterpillar on the fennel. And mm -hmm. there is also an caterpillar egg on there, Fran, and I brought this to show you because we had been talking yes. about it. you had never seen a caterpillar right. or a butterfly egg. And the little caterpillar hatched out of a couple of days ago, but now I'll get back to adopting. I go out and check my fennel about every day or every couple of days, mm -hmm. and when I do, I we'll see probably some caterpillars on it. I pick the fennel with the caterpillar. Mm -hmm. I take it in the house and put it, it in a small, vase. a small vase with water in it so it keeps the fennel fresh. Now what do I do with that? Well, you've got to have a place to put yes. the caterpillars. So my husband built me a caterpillar or a butterfly house. Now, he's not a carpenter, but it's very successful. Oh, yes. Notice that this is netting on the okay. outside of it, and then it's, um, I don't know what you call this. This is just a structure, I guess, right. or the frame of it, and the netting, so that I can see in it there's uh -huh. airflow through it. Yeah. I have a door for convenience to open it up, 
And then I put a paper towel in the bottom because caterpillars, their main purpose in life before they turn into a, a butterfly uh -huh. is to get bigger. bigger. And so they eat and eat and eat and poop. Okay. And the paper towel enables me to keep it clean in the bottom you, every day. Yeah, so you check so it every I day. So I check it every day and take it out. The fennel, I also go out and pick every day fresh, transfer the caterpillars off, because it doesn't hurt mm -hmm. them, to put them on fresh fennel. And then I put it in, just like that. And then I keep it in a warm place, and, and mine's uh -huh. in the garage on a table. Now, will nurseries also sell butterfly houses? Maybe not as big as this um, one. You can go to Walmart, a teacher supply store, oh, okay. and they have the little uh, plastic uh, butterfly houses. Okay. And, um, and they're not as convenient to me. They zipper around the bottom, oh. and um, it's hard to get something in and out. Yes, I now, like Now, you've this got more. to feed your caterpillar. Mm -hmm. Every day. I mean, he's, mm -hmm. he's eating. That's his whole purpose. So you have to put fresh so you have or to dill put, in there. Yes, or some a parsley, whatever yeah. your caterpillar was on. Now, remember, we're talking only about the black swallowtail okay. here. Because okay. this is, so if you were talking about <clears throat> the monarch, you wouldn't put, because you wouldn't no. see the caterpillar on right. fennel. I would just okay. clip off parts of my butterfly weed and put it put in Put it there. in there. And you want to keep it in water to keep it fresh. Right. And the caterpillar doesn't need water. He's getting all of his water that he needs out of the fennel. Okay. Now, so we've got this done. I close it back up. The caterpillar is eating and eating and eating and getting bigger. I change the paper towel every day just for sanitary purposes. Now, the caterpillar, when he gets big enough, he decides when he's ready to make a chrysalis. Now, I have had caterpillars in here, and on the side, up here on the door, there's one chrysalis. There's another chrysalis here, here, down there. Yes. And they're red. It's probably pretty hard to see, but they will stay in that chrysalis stage mm -hmm. for 10 to 15 days. Now, as, okay. as the caterpillar gets big enough, he decides that he's going to change. He will travel around his house he will find the perfect, perfect place that he wants to make yes. the chrysalis, and he will attach himself to the wood or to the netting. Right. right. And when he attaches himself, he stops eating, and he makes a J shape. There's one right here which we can't. You yeah, you yeah. Can, see. can see the people can. can't see, and he's making a J shape, and he will make this chrysalis. We do not pull the chrysalis off, and we do not touch it or right. fool with it because we would damage the butterfly, the butterfly inside. It's a very, uh, it's a stage that we need to leave alone. Right, it's pretty fragile. It is, it could be fragile. It, it doesn't mean that you couldn't touch it. It's hard, it's not very yeah. pretty. Sometimes they're green in color, and then they'll sometimes they're brown in color. Okay. All right, and I told you 10 to 14 days before right. you get uh, a butterfly. Right. They vary. Now, the size of the caterpillar, when he goes into a chrysalis, has to do with the size of the butterfly you're going to get. Okay. So if it's a smaller caterpillar, it's going to be a smaller butterfly. Right. And if it's a big caterpillar, it's you get a larger butterfly. So this is the butterfly house. That's how I adopt the caterpillars. Okay. Then, now they're in the chrysalis. Now they're going to turn into butterflies. First of all, I have a question, though. Where in your house do you put the butterfly on house? The, in the garage, because okay. it's warm. If I okay. put it in the house with the air conditioning, that slows down all the right. whole process. And they might not even turn into butterflies. It might be too cold, and they think it's fall. Mm -hmm. They think it's winter, and they wouldn't come out. They think it's, you know, they're going to winter over. They hibernate. If you pick a caterpillar off of your <coughs> fennel or your dill, whatever, in the <coughs> late fall, except a monarch, the, it will chrysalis all winter long. It'll stay oh. chrysalis all winter long. It's a protective thing. Mm -hmm. right. And come out in the spring. So then when the butterfly, when the chrysalis is ready, 
to hatch out into a butterfly, you, the butterfly will come out. He will stay approximately two hours before you can touch him, before his wings get dry mm -hmm. and he is able to fly. And you do not, there again, do not, do not touch, touch the butterfly. Just watch him, flap his wings, and try to get yes. him dry. And he, the fluid in his body is going into his wings to enable his wings to navigate mm -hmm. and to fly up and down. And so he is in there flopping his wings back and forth okay. in a drying process. Right. And you can leave the butterfly in a house for a whole day. He doesn't have to have anything to eat. He's perfectly okay before you release him. And then you if, just open the door and let and him And let out. him go, yes. And there's generally um, one or two will hatch out because they went into chrysalis about the same time. Okay. So there's one or two swallowtails in there. And then he goes back out. His purpose is, or her purpose <laughs> is to lay the eggs, start the process all over again. So you've increased your black swallowtail population. Yes. Now, the monarch, you would do the same thing. You would harvest the monarch caterpillar right. off of the milkweed, Weed. bring it to your house, put it in the water. Same process. Yes. Same amount of days before it hatches and release it. Is the monarch's key season a little later in the summer? Yes, it is. The monarchs do not migrate. Now, we'll see some monarchs around here, but they do not generally get a, a flourish of monarchs until uh, probably late August, September. Okay, mm -hmm. good. I'll They're migrating. More. And we have, um, today, we've showed you the picture of the swallowtail. We have a close-up picture of uh, the swallowtail caterpillar. There he is. Yes. And when you have the uh, caterpillar of the swallowtail, the children, when I take it to school, the children are real interested. If you touch the caterpillar on his head, he sends out two little orange antennas. Yes. <laughs> and he also has the stinkiest smell that you smell when those two little antennas okay, come out. That's, that's he's saying, stay away from me and please don't eat me butterfly. I mean, you know, before I get to be a butterfly, don't eat me bird. Right. And that's his protection. So now you notice he doesn't have any antennas until you right. touch him. Right. I'm seeing that. Now there's his chrysalis. That's up close. That's what we have in here. That's before yes. he comes out. Nothing very beautiful, is it? You it, never know that a beautiful butterfly would come out of that. But it's still amazing. They have that little, like, silken thread that holds it on. And that's what you do not want to... Uh, ever disturb. Yes, I see that. Here is... That's our monarch. That's our beautiful monarch butterfly that migrates all the way to Mexico. And um, just the, because the monarch that you have that has laid eggs on your milkweed does not mean that that particular monarch will uh, travel all the way. But the families down, maybe their children or her children right. will. And there is the monarch caterpillar. Notice his two long black antennas. Are they out all the time? Yes, they are. And but, uh, birds do not like the monarch because of the, when he eats the milkweed, it leaves a nasty taste in the caterpillar. And so birds just don't like the monarch caterpillar. So they don't have as many predators as the black swallowtail well, for birds. Yeah. That's a, a good About the way. same color as a black swallowtail caterpillar. And look at that, with all the different sizes. That's the different stages. sizes. Now remember, he starts out really, really small, then keeps growing, and because that's his life, is to eat, eat, eat. And he changes, um, he loses that skin five t different times. He so changes. So that's a, a very immature um, caterpillar we see at about, say, 2 o'clock on that picture at the mm -hmm, upper right. Mm -hmm. And then uh, we see a mature one right in the middle. Right in the middle. He's ready to go into a chrysalis. And then there's one other butterfly that sometimes I've seen in abundance, sometimes not. But, oh, that's coming up, but this is the chrysalis. That's it? a chrysalis of the monarch. And ah. it, it is beautiful. It is green. 
very translucent. And then it has uh, some gold dots on it and a gold ring around the top of it. And you, can, you will be able to see into the monarch chrysalis. Uh, you will see the wings. What, really? Just before he comes out, you will see the color of the monarch wings. So this starts out as green, but then becomes um, transparent? Yeah, uh, translucent. To a, yeah, translucent, and you can see through it, and you will see the colors of the monarch butterfly wings in it. And then you know he's about ready, or she, will be about ready to uh, come out of their chrysalis. Okay, here is that other butterfly that... It, there, isn't that the... That's the eastern swallowtail, and you can tell the swallowtail again by two of his long, uh, on his wings. See the long drapes or yes. something hanging down? Those are the swallowtails, and we do see those and around our yard. They have a different looking caterpillar, a really neat looking caterpillar. Uh, they're very, very beautiful butterfly. All swallowtails are, and notice how large he is. So see, you're attracted to that butterfly. Yes, indeed, indeed. So, one more question, um, Lou. Do you recommend any books to help us learn? Uh, yes, I do. Um, Lori Spencer made the, butterf the Arkansas Butterfly and Moth book. And all, when you're talking about, um, whoops, I don't remember. <laughs> there we go. Uh, when you're talking about um, the host plants of different butterflies, she lists all the host plants in here. Oh. And she tells... Uh, the plants that they're the some of the nectar plants, but she does list the host plants, which is really good. Oh yes, and right. then wonderful you're not just pictures. In the dark. Yeah, she has wonderful pictures, and there's a whole section on all of the uh, all of our swallowtails. Shows the different caterpillars and the different ones. So it's really a very good book to have as a reference. And I use it all the time because I'll see uh, a different butterfly. And we have so many butterflies. Yes. Uh, little blue ones. And we have and little tiny skippers. And orangey and brown ones. We have bush. Yes. Fruit. We have just all kinds. And Buckeye. we just, yes, mm -hmm. lady, uh, when painted lady, painted lady that I found in your garden yes. the other day. Yes. Uh, so it's just a wonderful thing to have butterflies in your garden to have an insect that doesn't bite you and uh, yes. like the chiggers and the mosquitoes <laughs> that we have so many of. Oh, and it's just a thrill to see them uh, flitting around in there. It is, yeah, it is. It if is. If we have um, a few more minutes, I've got uh, some butterfly facts that, oh, that good. I think are, are uh, that I always tell the children and, and it's kind of fun. One is that the butterflies have their own straw. They don't uh, need to have somebody. They carry their straw with them all the time. And when they land oh. on, they just stick their straw down and suck up the, the nectar. nectar. And they uh, taste their food through their feet. Oh. And they also, um, when the, the butterflies, because they're so beautiful, it used to be that people would say that if you released a butterfly, you made a whoosh, oh. and the whoosh would come true as the butterfly was flying away. You were making the whoosh and sending, and, and, it, out. And, and sending it out, and your whoosh would go out, and it would come true. <laughs> I don't know how true that really is, but yes. doesn't it sound nice? Yes, it does. That as you're releasing the butterfly, that you would make a whoosh, and then your whoosh would yeah. come true. Well, thank you, Lou, for coming here today. This has really been fun. You're and welcome. You've had I love butterflies. And you have wonderful information. And I can tell you, you love your butterflies I a lot. do. Thank um, you for having me, friend. Well, you're welcome. For more information on the Bella Vista Garden Club, you can go to bellavistagardenclub.com. And uh, it's our website. We have a lot of different um, uh, links that you can you can hit on to find the information you want. Our new year starts with our next meeting on September 25th and we'd love to have anyone come. It's, it's open to all and um, we're a, a fun group and there's always something to learn. And we are a fun group. Yes we are. <laughs> I, like I hope you've enjoyed the program and we'll tune in again next month. Until then, don't forget to stop and smell the roses. <laughs>